Greetings viewers, Eric the Car Guy. Welcome to the show, thanks for tuning in. I have never been happy with the performance of the brakes on my dad's truck. In fact, I freaking hate the performance of the brakes on my dad's truck. I've previously replaced the master cylinder with a brand new master cylinder for the truck and I still have the same result. This appears to be a common problem on these trucks. I've just rebuilt the rear end on this and I thought, well, as long as I'm here, let's do a rear disc brake conversion that comes with a new master cylinder that hopefully will be able to solve this squishy brake pedal problem for good. I got this kit from Summit. I won't lie, it will set you back. It's about a grand. Uh, but you get some sizable rotors that are vented, which is even more heavy duty than what I've got on the Ford. In fact, these don't look that much smaller than what they have on the front of this truck. Additionally, you get new hard brake lines for the rear, new brake pads, new calipers, brackets for the installation, brake master cylinder bleeding kit, hardware and this master cylinder. Now there's a couple of things I find interesting on this parts list and one of those things is the fact that there is a firm feel master cylinder. So if we follow this over I think that's the A0463. I don't know if just replacing this it's hard to say because you also have to do some modifications to the proportioning valve and it looks like they've installed a proportioning valve directly on the master cylinder. So I don't know if just replacing it with this master cylinder will solve the problem, but I heard installing a later model master cylinder on these older trucks is something that helps improve brake pedal feel. Just throwing that out there. The other interesting thing that I found is these rear calipers are for Lincoln 88 to 91 which I find very interesting. So if you're going to find brake pads for this, which you obviously will need at some point, uh, those are the uh, brake pads that you're gonna need. Looks like it's for an 88 to 91 Lincoln, but I'm not exactly sure for what model. Also for good measure, I will be adding a set of steel braided brake lines, both to the front and the rear, but not for the calipers because I don't have the lines that go from the uh, hard lines to the calipers. Well, in order to replace your drum brakes for disc, you first need to remove the drum brakes. As I stated, I'm reconditioning this axle. I've already removed the backing plate and all the brake assembly and everything else. Save your parking brake cables because apparently we're reusing them. I'm not exactly sure how that works yet, but that's kind of the way it looks. There were no parking brake cables in the kit, so we got to reuse what we had some way, somehow. Axle removal is also covered in that video that I mentioned. That will be linked in the description. Step one after removing all this stuff is to install these plates just like this. There's a step side here and the other side is flat. So the step side needs to face you as you install it just like this. And reuse the uh, bolts for the backing plate and put them in like this according to the instructions. So thread the bolts in from the back to front like that. I was not a fan of reusing the nuts and bolts that held the backing plate to the axle tube for the mounting plate to the axle tube. In fact, these nuts and bolts were left over in the kit and I suspect that that's what these were for, uh, but the instructions never stated to use them. But if I were you, I would use these. Check for clearance, obviously. I don't think you'll have any issues there, but I would use these nuts and bolts instead for a better finish. On my truck, these are 15 millimeter and it looks like this fits on a groove, so I think it's important that this fits on the groove on the axle. They didn't list the torque spec for this, but this is a pretty stout plate. I just opened up the hardware kit and organized everything. Uh, looks like we have some uh, larger nuts, smaller nuts, bleeder valves, crush washers. There were also some in the bags with the caliper. Uh, just be mindful of that because I just opened the bag and a couple of them went on the floor and I went hunting for them. I didn't realize that the hardware kit also had a set of sealing washers in it. You also have these other washers and then here's some other assembly fasteners, both big and small. Then there's a packet of shims, it looks like, so that you can center the caliper if things aren't quite right when you're all done. Next, the instructions state to get these longer bolts. Install them through in this direction and all four holes. Next, they say to install a washer on the back of each one of these. The supplied washers, not the shims. Next will come the caliper brackets installed like this. They are, all four of these are the same. So don't sweat it. Just know that they're all the same. Lastly, they want the uh, parking brake retainer installed, I believe like this. We'll find out in a minute. 
This part is somewhat confusing because there is the parking brake cable bracket. They say to install it on the upper left, but clearly if you're looking at it this way, it's the upper right. So maybe it's the left if you're looking at it from the back. I'm just going by this illustration, which seems to say that if you're looking at it from the front, this first hole that's in there, there's three in there. I have a feeling I'm gonna have to go back in here and maybe move this around because the bolt sticks out in the back. Could interfere with the parking brake cable? Not sure yet. Seems like an awful lot of extra bolt to me, but I'm just gonna roll with it. Keep going with what the instructions are saying to do. These seem to be 16 millimeter. They did not list the torque spec. No way this is gonna work. As far as I'm seeing right now, there's no way I can put a cable through this and it's not gonna interfere with that bolt sticking through there. So something's up. And in fact, this whole time I was wondering how the parking brake was gonna be handled. And I have my doubts as to whether or not the original parking brake cables will actually work. I'm just trying to plan ahead a little bit. This is kind of what I mean with this parking brake cable. See how it directly interferes with that bolt? I'm gonna move its location. I'm gonna move this bracket back to where hopefully that won't be the, an issue like it is here. I'm just wondering if you take it and go with that one. That gives you a little bit of room. It goes directly <laughs> into that bolt, no matter what. I'm gonna think on this, but first I'm gonna tighten these bottom ones because I know those are good. Well, I've done some mocking up of things. Uh, I've installed the caliper loosely on here just to see, okay, can I actually use these? And yes, they want you to mount them upside down. That's why they have bleeder valves in those attachments. Let's say this is all the way mounted on there. And then this is mounted on the way they want you to mount it, which would have been in this front hole here. That cable never would have passed through because it would have come in contact there. Also, it would push this whole thing forward far enough to where that cable's not in a good spot. So if you try to move it back, it actually interferes with that back bolt. And that, I think, makes it even more challenging. So I've decided to cut the bolt. I've got my shortened bolt. I'm gonna install this on the final hole like that so it rests up there. A washer because that hole's a bit big and then the lock nut when this comes and passes through now way less interference still some but I'm more comfortable with this I'm just gonna get this side installed short one goes here and washers and caliper brackets there's a little washer. Well, I did cut things a bit short. I'm not even making contact with the nylon part of the nut. So I have purchased new bolts uh, that are a bit longer that hopefully will solve this issue. These are 17 by 20, I believe by inch and a quarter. I've been sort of looking at this and the way it all goes together. And to me, it seems this side might be easiest to come in from the top. However, when I place the bracket on the other side, I'm gonna place it so that it's facing down like this, because I believe the other side, it will work better that way. Yeah, that's, that's a nice size there. My question would be, how come those weren't in the kit to start with? I guess they made them a little bit longer in case you need to shim things, because uh, there's not a whole lot of room there, but still. Uh, they seem pretty long for the application to me. Yeah, I don't think I'm gonna have my dream of having this point down like that. I've got brand new axle seals here. Be super duper careful not to damage them. Yeah, we're not in yet. <laughs> Try to find the splines. There we are. Once the axles push through, you can install the C-clip simply by pushing it on once it's seated, make sure it's seated. Pull the outer flange back. There it is. Same thing on this side. Mm. 
With the axles installed, it's time to put the pin back in. So. I'm only gonna run this in for a couple of threads because before I fully commit to this, I wanna make sure that I don't need to do any shimming uh, to get the rotors and calipers to play nice. New rotors have a coat of Cosmoline on them, which is a rust inhibitor. Uh, soapy water is uh, the, well, the by the book method. I just use brake clean and a rag. Cool, right? That's like rear disc brakes on my truck. Ha! In order to get an accurate determination of where the rotor is gonna sit, it's sort of flopping around right now. I want to lock it down. So I'm taking an old axle nut or come to think of it, I could use my old pinion nut from rebuilding the rear end. I just put it on like this, take one of the lug nuts, run it down. And that gives an approximation of what things are like when the wheel is installed. The calipers get installed upside down. Yes, I said that correctly. Uh, they give special fasteners for the brake hoses to go into here with bleeder valves so you don't have to worry about the bleeder valve being underneath. See my uh, Ford rear disc brake conversion for the issues that you'll run into with that. Anyway, in order to insert the brake pads, I'm gonna need to remove this part of the caliper off its mounting bracket. So I'm gonna do that now. Uh, looks like these are 14 millimeter. Use the dark colored fasteners. There are four of them that came in the kit. It doesn't look too bad as far as placement. These are three quarter fasteners. Here are the new brake pads. I'm disappointed. And I'll tell you why. See any brake shims? You need those to help keep things quiet. Ain't no brake shims there. That's why I'm disappointed. I'm liking this kit less and less. Because there's a prospect that these brake pads will come on and off a few times, I'm not gonna put any lubrication on them now, but normally what I would do is I would put a little anti-seize on the ends where it makes contact uh, with the caliper bracket. Also, I'd go in to the slide pins and add a little bit of extra silicone paste, but these seem to be moving freely now, and it looks like a slightly different type of lubricant, and I don't really like mixing lubricants. Yeah, because look, the space that those shims would have taken up. So this means I'm pretty sure that during just normal brake application, I'm gonna hear this from the back here. And that's because there are no shims, but if these truly are Lincoln calipers, perhaps I can track some down. Something else to note about these types of calipers that have a parking brake assembly in, in, integrated inside the caliper is these little V-shaped things need to mate up well, I'm, I'm showing you backwards right now, but they need to mate up with those uh, grooves. So that little peg that's sticking up needs to go in that groove. If it does not, spongy brake pedal. And one thing they specifically state in this is they don't want you cranking the parking brake out in order to make contact because that causes it to twist. They want you to use the hydraulics, which pushes this straight out. Install the caliper. Uh, maybe those pesky springs will help keep things in line and uh, uh, shims won't be as necessary. Also, I just noticed, make sure that this sits in this groove because if it doesn't, like it just did, you won't be able to fully secure the fastener. These are 14 millimeter. It sure does look cool. Now that everything is assembled, I want to rotate it around, see if any metal to metal contact is happening. And if there is, that's where the shims would come in. Just on initial spinning, I'm not hearing anything that doesn't sound like brake pads making contact with a brake rotor. Everything seems good. I'm encouraged by that. Uh, but I'm going to take it one step further, install a wheel, and do the same process and see if the wheel comes into contact with anything. Looking good. I just wish I had a backing plate. Well, I'm convinced, so I'm going to take this wheel off and put the other side together. A specific torque spec was not listed for this, but if I'm gonna guess, I'd say go 80 foot-pounds or pound-feet, depending upon how you wanna say it. 
I made an executive decision. I'm not putting any lubricants on these brake pads at all. Not until I get the shim situation sorted out. There's so much of a gap in between the brake pad and the caliper bracket that I don't think any lubricant would have really any effect whatsoever. The good news is, is uh, they certainly won't be rusting up to the point where you have to, or the brake pads don't move. Apparently these springs like to pop out. I suppose you want to watch out for that. Make sure that those springs stay in place. Now to plumb the hydraulics and uh, figure out the parking brake cables. Now we've got to run some brake lines. This is the old bracket that held the old brake line and the vent tube for the differential. I'm just going to take off the old brake line so I can install a new one. All I need is this part for now. New set of steel braided lines from Russell. Got these from Summit. Uh, link is in the description. But there's a new rear brake line that comes down to the diff that I'm going to use out of this kit. There's the part number for you. Here's the guy we're after. I'm going to wait and finish tightening that till it's up on the truck because I want to be able to move it around. It's not very flexible. Just going to get this started. Avoid getting brake fluid on paint. It will eat right through it. I'm going to hook the vent tube back up, take my cap plug off. There was a bracket here on this differential bolt that held this on there. And then this on the other side held a brake line over here. So I'm going to remove these two fasteners and put these in here. These were 25. I'm just trying to use the old one to figure out where to go. It looks like I was wise not to tighten that one down yet. The brake lines that came in the kit, one is shorter than the other one. You notice up on here, this is closer to the left side than it is to the right side. So long one goes to the right, short one goes to the left. I found out that the, uh, this end goes in here. Yeah, snug for now seems good. That seems like an awful lot of extra brake line. They say bend it to conform to the axle housing, use the old clips, which this is one of those. So I'll take it up above the shock stuff. I don't know why I'm doing that because it's very possible I'll be cutting this. I think what I'll do is I'm going to attach the rubber line here and see where it lands. One ceiling washer goes on top, the other goes underneath, and then into the caliper. It appears to be 14 millimeter. I'm trying to figure out the best routing for the lines with the least amount of stress to everybody. I know mark it where I'm gonna cut it. I'm gonna try to connect it right there. And this will just cut the end off so I can get to the coil, which I'll remove a section. And then I'll cut out that section and then we'll reinstall it and then our truck will go really fast. There we are. <laughs> That's the only part that I wanted anyway. Ha ha. <laughs> Cut this any length we want later. We just want this part. Now I gotta make my mark again. Am I regretting bending that? Yes. I'll do better next time. One day I'll be good at this. One day you'll watch the Eric the Car Guy channel and be like, he's a real professional, he knows how to build cars. Instead of, that guy has no clue about what he's doing, does he? But I can't look away. It's like the car wreck on the side of the road. As long as you're watching, I'm good, but let's be real. 
I often don't know what I'm doing. I figured it out though. Somehow I managed. I really like this workbench. You know, come to think of it, if that squiggly stuff is going to be on there, it better be on there before I do any of this. Now, personally, I've seen this stuff, like, cause corrosion. I'm wondering why I'm even putting it on there, but I am. I can do better, I know. I'll work on that. That has been an issue with my Eastwood. <laughs> I have to, I don't know what operation I'm using right now. I've already glued it back on once to limited success. I've done videos all about this process. I'll link them in the description. I should do it. Now I have a slightly more custom line. Let's put it on. Well, I suppose that'll have to do. Tighten things up. This C-clip was on here for you know, if it passed through something, it just, it doesn't need to be there. I think it looks better without it. I'm just going to start this one by prying this off. Almost got the cameraman. Almost got you. Not oh, sorry. Going back through old footage, I found out I didn't have this bracket placed correctly, so I just flipped it around. Uh, this way I'll have a nice clear path, hopefully, over to here. It's kind of the same situation over here where I've got this last tab. I, I want a little bit of slack over here for when I do brake pads. So if I did it up here, I probably could still do it. I just don't like having this one thing held on over there. I know I'm gonna have too much brake line. I'm gonna have to shorten it. I guess to match the other side, I want it to do this. But this time I won't make that final bend until after. The spring thing doesn't make it easy to work with. Gonna leave a little bit of extra up here. If I ever gotta remove this diff cover, I wanna be able to do it. Probably there. At least they're not too short, right? So if you get the SSB rear brake, rear disc brake conversion kit for your 10 volt rear end on your GMT 400 pickup truck, know that you're gonna to have to do some custom work on the brake lines. Because we drew our line on our springy thing, we don't have one on this. We need one on this. I'm gonna say there. I like working with my new workbench. This is the first time I've really had a chance to get into it. It's just so nice having such a solid work surface. Really glad I got it. Someday I'll have fully equipped tools and everything back here. Why do you feel like you suddenly aren't doing anything? Tool failure at this juncture is not an option just came off. I'll take a win. Yeah, don't forget to put your stuff on before you start. Oh yeah, so much easier this time. It's good to temper your tools by throwing them on the floor occasionally. They absolutely love it. Love how solid this is. Well, after finishing the second line, I just noticed that I put the wrong kind of flare on the end of here. I should just only go to op one and get this flare over here instead of going to op two. This side, not gonna be so bad, it's still straight. Other side, well, okay, that explains it. That's why it's not working, because my tool is broken. We're doing one less step. So instead of going to op two, we're just gonna go to op one, and that's gonna give us the bubble we need. And that gives us that, which is what's gonna seal up inside that brake line. Uh, 
I like it like that. And that's the way it's gonna stay. I'm gonna get a longer zip tie and secure that so it's not flopping around. That's just enough. Oh, just enough. Brake lines. Well, viewers, that will put a bow in part one of the rear disc brake conversion on my GMT 400 pickup truck. GMT 400 trucks ran from 1988 to 1998, so if you have a Chevrolet or GMC pickup truck and you're looking to upgrade to rear disc, I hope this little video mini series is helping you. Now, if you wanna see part two, it will be out in a week, unless the video is already out, of course, but I will put a link to that video when it's available down in the description right towards the top. Or if you're a premium member of ericthecarguy.com, you get a chance to watch this video in its entirety without commercial interruption. There will be a link to that in the description as well. Also linked in the description will be the parts, tools, things that I use, the additional information, so please check there if you got questions about this video. If you have automotive questions not covered in this video, I ask you head to ericthecarguy.com, also linked in the description. Please don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, and of course watch, do all those things that help me make a living. I super appreciate that. Uh, be safe, have fun, stay dirty. Thank you so much for watching, and I will see you next time and beyond.